All right, so today we're talking about the Cowboys. Your first question, your thought question of the day, what is the difference between a gunfighter and a cowboy? Can anybody tell me the difference? Anybody know the difference? A gunfighter and a cowboy. They are two different things. Yeah. There's a very different use of their gun. A cowboy used a gun for survival. They, well, I guess they both did, but he used it to shoot at snakes, animals, um, renegades that are trying to take their cattle, and their job is just to take the cattle from one place to another. That is a cowboy. A gunfighter, however, is a very different breed. This is somebody who goes head-to-head -head like Alex versus me, and whoever doesn't win dies. So a gunfighter is somebody who will practice probably two to three hours a day on their gun skills. And they are very fast, and they're very good with a trigger, because they have to be, because that game, you know, the loser dies. So it's a very different kind of thing. So there is definitely a difference between those two, and you'll see that. Now, we're going to be putting your posters up in a couple of days, and we're going to do a little game with them. But I wanted to do this first, because I want you to know the difference between an outlaw, a gunfighter, a gunman, and a cowboy, because there's differences. And then you'll see how they fit. Okay? All right. So first, I want you to look at your introduction. And I want you to look for two answers. Okay? And you'll just add these to your notes. So first of all, what created the need for a cattle drive in the first place? And then two, why did they move north? There's two things up north. Why did they move north? Okay? So let's see here. Kaylee, will you start out reading cattle raising became? Cavaline. Thank you. So what is the answer to our first question? What created the need for a kettle drive? It's in that first paragraph. What created the need? Mr. Erickson. Because where were all the guys? Yeah, the guys had left to fight in the Civil War. So they left the cattle unattended, they kept reproducing, and they had all these cattle just wandering. They were wandering all over the place. So they had to do something about you know, where to put them and what to do with them. Because they were eating up all the grass down south in Texas area especially. So they wanted to take them where they could actually get some money. Okay? So we know that there's some things up north that she's already mentioned. There's another reason why we're headed up north. So read that for us, please. Ryan. Rumors. Okay, so there's two reasons why they moved up north. What's the first one? What does Abilene have in it? Yep, they've got the railroad up north. So they're heading north to hit the railroads, and then where are they selling these cattle? East, yes. They're shipping them east. Because that's where they're getting 40 bucks 
ahead, right? So they have to get them to the railroad so they can take them out east. This is one of your questions on your written review. Remember, those are the two reasons. Railroad, so they can ship them east because they were getting a better price out there, okay? Now I'm gonna move to our next slide. Oh, I forgot I hate that when I did that. And as we're talking about this next paragraph, we're gonna kind of take a look at this. These are the four trails that we have here. Okay, so I'm gonna move this out of the way. All right, so first of all, notice the Chisholm Trail. That's the one in green here. Notice it has all these fingers down in Texas. They go all the way from Brownsville, way down in the bottom, to Corpus Christi, Victoria, Houston, and they all come together just north of Dallas and Fort Worth up here, and they come up here. And notice they head to like Dodge City, Ellsworth, Abilene, uh, Newton, Wichita, Caldwell. Okay, so that's the Chisholm Trail. The next one, the red, is the Shawnee Trail. They go also all the way from Brownsville up here to Missouri, to Kansas City, Sedalia, and St. Louis. And our next one is the Goodnight Loving Trail. That's this one right here. It kind of bends like this. That's called the Loving's Bend. And then it goes up into Colorado. So it goes up to Denver and Pueblo. And notice at this point, 1890s, 1900, that's about as far as the railroad went. It didn't go any further west. So that was the furthest they could go. Then you have the Western Trail. And that's this kind of orangey one. Starts here in San Antonio down here. And it goes up right through the center, up to Dodge City. And then this one actually goes all the way into North Dakota because there were people in North Dakota that needed cattle. So they were the ones that would actually deliver it all that way. Okay. Yeah. Goes to El Paso. Um, I don't even know what that one is. It's not a very common one. I mean, there were others, but these are the four biggest ones. It's a good question. Um, now notice, why are all these cities important? Or why do they go to those cities? They're on the railroad, of course. These are all railroad towns, and we call those towns cow towns. And they boomed really fast with this cattle drive because all these cattle are coming up, there's money to be made, so people are coming to these towns. I mean, that's why Wichita, Kansas, or Abilene, Hayes, Kansas, I've been to Hayes, it's in Nowheresville, but it is a town because of the Cowboys. That's where it really started. So they get them to the railroad and then they move them east that direction, okay? And all these towns, a lot of them don't have law. So like, for example, does anybody know where Wyatt Earp got famous for cleaning up a town? Dodge City, Kansas. So this one right here, this was a big hub because we had two different trails that went through there and there was no law. So he was told to clean up Dodge City. And he went in and imagine you have no policeman, nobody, and he's supposed to just make people follow the rules. It was said he was so vicious, he didn't have to shoot anybody. All he had to do was look at him. And he could control a lot by his look. He was just really tough. If he came to Tombstone, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's um, continue on with our notes a little bit. All right. So first of all, I want you to know, if you've seen movies and stuff like that with cowboys, it just is not as real as it really was. I mean, it makes it out to be so glamorous in the movies, and they're all cute, and they're all clean, and all that fun stuff. But the truth is, being a cowboy was not necessarily a fun thing. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of an excerpt from the book, Blog of a Cowboy, that one of you checked out. Someone's reading it. Okay. Um, and I just want to give you a piece of what it was like for a cowboy. And you can fill in your notes up there right in the top. Okay. All right. Here we go. Upset our wagon in the river and lost many of our cooking utensils. Was on my horse the whole night and it rained hard. Remember that guys like these didn't go in when the weather got bad. They stayed out all night long, and they stayed out there in the snow, the blizzard, the rain, hail, you name it, they were out there. So it wasn't real fun sometimes. There was one of our party drowned today, Mr. Carr, and several narrow escapes, I among them. Many men in trouble, awful night, not having had a bite to eat in 60 hours. Tired, 
Very tired. Indians, very troublesome. Oh, what a night. Thunder, lightning, and rain. We followed our beeves all night as they wandered about. We hauled cattle out of the mud with oxen half the day. Nothing but bread and coffee to eat. So what are bees again? Cows. It's another word for cattle, right? And remember that when you have lightning and thunder, they get really stirred up. And so they want to move because they're scared. So you have to always kind of pull them together and stuff like that. Now, what was our other vocab word we used for mud? Remember when we did our diaries? Gumbo. So we could also say we hauled our cattle out of the gumbo. Very good. Hands all growling and swearing. Everything wet and cold, sick and discouraged. Now when I say hands all growling and swearing, do I mean my hands? What does that mean? When we say hands then? Your helpers, your workers. So hands would be the cowboys, the workers on the drive. Okay. How many of you have gone camping? Okay, I love to camp. How many of you have been camping when it rains? You know that feeling in the morning where everything is wet and damp and it's just mucky? You know, that's usually the time we head home, right? <laughs> Most of us go home then. But these poor guys, they didn't get to go home. They stayed out in that stuff. And you can imagine trying to dry everything out. It had to have been really fun. My back is blistered badly because of the sun, of course. Flies was worse than I ever saw them. Weather very hot, Indian saucy. If you've ever been around cattle or horses, do any of you have horses in here? Okay, how do you deal with the flies? It would drive me insane. How do you deal with it? Do you just get used to it or is there something that can help you with it? Or Because they're there. Even with spray, they're still there somewhat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they're always around. I just, uh, and that's hard for me to get used to very much. One man down with boils and the other with egg. Found a human skeleton on the prairie floor. So that just gives you a little piece of his life. Now, they obviously had a lot of dangers out there. And typically, when they had a gun, their gun was used for these particular dangers. Things such as blizzards, stampedes, the cattle start going on their own and you got to try to control it. Drought, no water for miles and miles, prairie fires, rustlers that tried to steal your cattle, Indians, and floods that would wash out a river you may have crossed or even a road that you've used before. Um, now, I know you guys read your cowboy diaries and we'll be sharing those coming up. Uh, some of you found that they got along with the Indians in your reading, right? And some of them did not. It kind of depended. But they tried to get along because they had to cross Indian territory. So they really would try to get along as much as they could. Uh, first of all, I want to point out a couple of our paintings as we go through here. This is a very famous painting. It's called The Stampede by Lightning, starring Frederick Remington. Now, what do you notice? What do you see when you look at Mitch, give me one thing you see. Lightning in the sky. Good. Rohan, give me another one. Cattle in the background going all different directions. Good. It's your birthday today. Happy birthday. Good. Give me another one, Wildy. What do you see? Pouring rain. Good. What do you notice about the cowboy? What do you see? Daddy? What's he wearing? He's wearing chaps. Good. What else do you see? Alex? He has a hat on. And notice it's not like the cowboy hat that we're used to, is it? Really. We'll talk about the things that they wore. A typical cowboy hat was something like this, usually because they could pull it down over their eyes and their face, and it was hailing or if it was snowing or whatever. 
So they typically used a hat that they could form to their face as much as possible. Yeah. You'll see that the horse is pretty agitated too. You can tell he's running. Yeah. Cool. All right. A couple of things about cowboys. And if you know some cowboys today, see if they apply to these rules. Cowboys were very democratic. They believed in, you know, everybody has a vote, that kind of thing. But they disliked intellectuals. What do I mean by that? What's an intellectual? Somebody who's who's smart. They didn't like educated people because most of these guys were not educated. They were working out on the, the trail by the time they were probably 12. So they were not educated. So they didn't like people that were showing off their intelligence. They were individualistic because you had to be. You sat on your horse 12, 24 hours a day, depending on what, what you're doing. Yet, they were very loyal to their peers, and they would take a bullet for you if need be. Okay? They spoke only when necessary, and when they did, they said it slowly, with a few swears in between and a little bit of a drawl. Right? So a cowboy typically was not very talkative. And this is not the kind of guy you wanted to bring home to mama, ladies, because he had a hard time not swearing. He swore like a sailor quite often, and he spit, and he chewed, and he chased women. He was not like the good guy to bring home, for sure. He showed hospitality to other outfits. So if you ran into another cattle drive, they'd be great, like, great help. They'd be like, oh, you got to watch out for this river here because it's been washed out. You know, they help each other out and would share trail information with each other. Now let's talk about cowboy romance a little bit. <laughs> he showed exaggerated courtesy towards good women. So, oh yeah, so Emily, oh my goodness, they would be fawning over you, Emily. Oh ma'am, can I take your hand please? Can I dance with you? All that lovely stuff. But in the end, do they want that good woman? No, they do not. Ultimately, they would end up going towards the prostitutes because they don't want someone to tie them down. Because number one, they're not going to be there very long in that town because they're out on the road for three months of the t at a time, right? Plus, um, they're also really young. Remember, these are teenagers, like your age. Do you want to get married right now? No. Riley, what do you think? Probably not. Probably not so much right now? Yeah, they're your age. They're, they're wild and free, and they don't want to be tied down. So... They would definitely like to see a pretty lady like Emily, but they probably wouldn't want to marry her. That's probably true. Some cowboy facts for you. The movies don't always have it right, okay? There were only about 40,000 cowboys on the plains total. That's really all there was. It was not a very large group. And when you compare that to Sioux Falls, I mean, that's not even half of Sioux Falls, right? So it was a very small group. Only one in three cowboys, one in three cowboys was either Mexican or black. And if you look back at the old John Wayne movies, you'll see they were all white because they were the only ones allowed to be in movies back then. So that is a really common misconception. They got paid $90 at the end of a job. But the problem was, well, they did that so they would keep them on the job. Otherwise, they would run off and do something stupid and leave. So they kept them there to pay them. But the problem is, most of the time when they would finally get to that cow town like Dodge City, They'd get their paycheck and they'd spend it all in one night because they were dumb and stupid and young and free. So they would spend it on all kinds of stuff. So when they hit a cow town, they would basically give their money um, to these things and usually in this order. Whoops, that's not the right one. Oh, where'd it go? I missed one of my things. Oh, I missed it. Oh, I just, uh, sorry, I hit the pause button. So it went to a drink, a bath, a prostitute, and then some cards, in case you missed that at home. Oh, there you go. All right. Um, what is the deal? I think I put these in the middle of this. Hold on. There it is. Huh. A drink, a bath, prostitute, possibly some cards. Okay. Uh, the only thing a cowboy owned was actually his saddle. A lot of times in movies you'll see that they owned a horse, and that was not true. Number one, most of them didn't have that much money. 
Secondly, people on the cattle drive did not want them to own a horse because it meant they could take off on the job. And to be honest, these guys were irresponsible. They were those kind of people that would run off on the job. So all they owned was their saddle. Now, if they had taken off with one of the horses on the cattle drive, it would not have been pretty. If they had left with one of those, they would have a necktie party for them. What is a necktie party, Ryan? Yes, a hanging offense. They would take him to the nearest tree and they'd hang him. Because to steal a horse like a rustler would, that was a hanging offense. So you did not take off with someone's horse. Besides, a typical cowboy on the cattle drive had six horses per cowboy. Because, number one, they would get worn out if you used the same one every day. Number two, depending on where you were in the cattle drive, you used different kinds of horses. If you were in the front, you would use a really good horse that could lead. If you were in the back, you would use one of your dumpier horses. I mean, I hate to say that, but there were ones that you weren't quite as worried about. Okay, so what we're going to do right now, I want you to jump to the back side of your notes, or let's see, page, what is it? You'll see an arrow cut or an area where it says draw the cattle drive. It's on the back side of page one, because I think it's important for you to see the formation before we talk about the characters, okay? So first of all, you're going to be drawing this on your test, right? We have it on your written review. And you're going to have to identify these areas, okay? Um, imagine, first of all, they're going to have about 1,500 head of cattle. So over 1,000 cattle that they're trying to keep together, okay? All right, the first people out front, we have the trail boss. He is kind of like the manager at McDonald's. I mean, really, that's it, because he's in charge of hiring and firing everybody, but he doesn't own the cattle. He has been hired by this big, rich rancher down in Texas to drive the cattle up there. So he manages the whole, the whole group, okay? Yes, absolutely. Now, also out in front, we had the chuck wagon. The chuck wagon was the guy that gave you your food every time you ate and all that fun stuff. But he would go ahead because he's going out to scout for a water source more than anything that was usually where they would stop because you need water in order to have coffee in order to give water to the horses the cattle so they're going ahead to look for the next place they're headed like where they're going at the front of your arrow this is why i said think of it like an arrow when you draw it because it'll help you remember your spots these guys are called point and they're the ones that are leading the cattle in the right direction so they're in the front of the herd it was always nice to be at point. Now, you could get run over in a stampede, but typically these are your more experienced cowboys that have been out there a few times. Okay, That was a, a desired spot. On the side, you had swing. And these are the guys that are making sure that these cattle are not getting outside the direction you're wanting to go. So they are pushing in to make sure that they're not leading a different direction. This is a pretty tough job, and they had to keep running alongside there. On these, you have your flanks. And think of it like the flanks of an animal. Those are the sides of the animal, right? So the flanks are along the sides. And again, they're squeezing in to keep your cattle in. The worst position. The worst position was the position of drag. Drag, of course, picks up all the stragglers, makes sure they keep moving. Um, and this was the spot nobody wanted. It was usually given to the rookie or the tenderfoot of the group. Um, because when you have a thousand cattle, imagine all the dust and the poop that they're kicking up, and that's getting into your lungs, and you're breathing that in. So uh, nobody wanted to be a drag, for sure. Now, alongside, now I've seen this done on side or behind. You have your Wrangler and your Remuda. The Wrangler is the guy that takes care of all the extra horses, because remember, you have six horses per cowboy, so someone has to take care of all the horses. So that's the Wrangler. And then the Remuda is the group of extra horses. Okay. So now that'll kind of make sense as we talk about each of those. Pretty easy when you look at it. Isn't it? I very rarely get someone that gets something wrong on this. Okay. All right, so let's talk about those different people. So you're going to switch back now to where we left off on page one. And let's talk about our Wrangler and our Chuck Wagon. Which one's first on your notes? Wrangler. I know I did it by time, but 
There we go. Okay. The Wrangler typically was a young cowboy, one of the rookies, who took care of the Remuda, <clears throat> which are the horses. It was actually one of the most dangerous spots on the cattle drive because he was a target for young Indian braves because they could trade a horse for a prospective bride. So there were a lot of rustlers too. They're trying to steal all that. So um, you were always a target for that reason. He also was a target for rattlesnakes because he was on the ground more than most, which meant that he had problems with that sometimes too. So he always had to be on the lookout and have a gun ready to go. The Chucky or Chuck Wagon guy, holy cow. Uh, the cook had a lot of nicknames. The cook was nicknamed Cookie, the old woman, but you didn't say that to his face or you'd be in trouble. Uh, biscuit shooter, dough roller, and grub wrangler. Now we know that he made food, but he also was the dentist and the doctor of the group, if you can imagine. So if you had a bad tooth, he was the one that yanked it out. If you had an injury, he was the one that took care of it. Um, and remember, this guy was usually uneducated as well, so he didn't always know what he was doing. Uh, he might have more notches on his gun. What do I mean when I say notches? What does that represent? Kills, the number of kills that he has. They put a notch on their gun for every kill, okay? The reason he had more notches than most was he and the trail boss were the ones that went first to scout the territory to know where to stop, right? He was to forward for the horses, find a good campsite, and a good source of clean water. Most important, they need clean water for both men and animals. So he would sometimes run into the rustlers or the Indians first and would get more notches on his gun. Um, now, the cookie had a lot more control than you think. Okay? He might have just been the cook, but if I, for example, would have called him the old woman, he could punish you in his own way. Like, for example, remember that they cooked on an open flame, right? So he would give you the bottom of the bread that's burnt, you know, or if you'd had a stew, the bottom part that was burnt would be yours. Sometimes he would pick up treats like candy if they went through a town, and he would give it to the people that he liked. People that he didn't like wouldn't get those fun things too. So. He had a way of, of standing up for himself. Let's take a look at the chuck wagon here a little bit and see what's involved. Notice it is packed. Every inch of it is packed when they leave. All right. So first of all, if you look at the other side, this would be way over here. You know, the tongue of the wagon that they pull with horses. Okay. They would always point it towards the North Star at night. And you think about this, it is so logical, but it's something we take for granted. If it's cloudy in the morning, they can't tell what direction is which because you can't see the sun so or the moon for that matter if it's cloudy. So they would always point it towards the North Star so that they would know which way was north. And there are cases that they would get lost for three, four days, depending on how long the storm came in because they couldn't see the sun. So he was in charge of that. Remember, like I said, cowboys are not gunfighters. They only use their weapon for defense against snakes, Indians, or for hunting. It wasn't like they were going off and doing a, a face-off. So they were very different. One of their favorites was called Son of a Gun Stew, which included calf heart, calf brain, marrow gut, liver, and kidneys. So you get a lot of good protein in there. And you'll see that they did have pots like this that they did their stew in. The chuck wagon had to supply food for at least 30 men for three months. Think about that. 30 men for three months. It had to provide storage space for extra clothing because a cowboy obviously only wore what he had on him. And he only usually had one extra outfit. That was about it usually. Um, and he also had to keep all of their valuables in there, their tents, and their bedding if they had any. A lot of times the cowboy would have a blanket behind him on his saddle, but that was about it. And most of them did not change much. They wore that same outfit all three months of the drive, usually. 
if you go to any of those Old West shows, like you'll see those things and how they pack them. It's really interesting. So let's talk about the position of drag a little bit. Uh, oh, trail boss first, sorry. So like I said, the trail boss is kind of like the manager at McDonald's. He doesn't own the cattle, but he is the boss that hires and fires on site. Um, he also is the one that picks which trail you're going to use and decides, yes, this is where we're going to set camp. So he's the one that decides everything like that. The worst position, like I told you, on the cattle drive was drag because you get dust and poop kicked up in your face. And Thank goodness for uh, at least their scarves. They can put it over their face. So let's talk about the cowboy uniform. Let's start with the hat. Now the hat we know is the Texas hat. We call that the Texas style hat. It's got a nice brim to it. It's got some hardiness to it, right? Um, this was number one, their proudest possession because it was not just something to wear. It was something they used every day. They would use this hat for protection from the sun, from the wind, from hail and from branches. They would also use it uh, to fan the fire and even to carry water in. So they would take that water and put it in their hat and use it. Now typically, you know, a gym, you guys don't get to wear your baseball caps indoors, right? I don't get to either. But Cowboy was the exception to the rule. Number one, because he didn't care about those rules because he was pretty uneducated. And he was not a gentleman, but he also said, you don't take my hat. This is my hat. You know, it's a very important thing to them. So they often even wore it while sleeping because it covered your eyes real nice too. So let's take a look at the most common cowboy hats of the day. Like we said, we did have a Texas hat. Those were worn mostly from our cowboys down in the Texas area. But quite often they wore sombreros. Because remember, a lot of our cowboys were Mexican. Who came from Mexico and they wear sombreros down there. So that was very common. Montana guys tended to wear the Montana peak. It has a little bit more of a point to the top that you see there. A lot of lawmen tended to wear the Montana peak. And the people around our area wore the hat I showed you earlier that looked like this. It's more like a farmer's hat, isn't it? And again, it's a little more flexible so that you could pull it down over your face if you were getting rained on and stuff like that. So let's talk about that bandana. Oh shoot, I think I forgot one. All right, so let's talk about bandanas. Again, it wasn't just something pretty to wear, it was something they used. They used it to cover their mouth from trail dust, especially in the position of drag, like this little guy does. It was also used on the back of the neck to protect you from the sun. Because especially, you know, as you're going down Texas area, that's really hot sun, and it would blister your neck. So they would turn it and cover the back of your neck. See if I can just use this as a pretend. Let's say that um, he got cut on the arm here and he's squirting blood. You could take and wrap your bandana up. And then you would take like a stick. Give me a pencil. Yep. And you would do this. And then you would turn the, the stick. I don't want to break your pencil. And make a tourniquet out of it so that it would stop the profuse bleeding from happening. They did it with rattlesnakes too, but it's like there wasn't really help anywhere nearby. So even prolonging it was not going to help you much. You're usually going to die anyway. But, but they did if you were bleeding. That is true. So they did use it as a tourniquet. Whoops. Like you see right there. What's that? Yeah. yeah. Now you know what Wrangler is. It's the horse guy. So let's talk about those jeans. Am I off? Oh, we're going to talk about belts on this one. Yeah. Pants and jeans, we'll talk about the belt. Okay, so um, have you ever heard cowboy butts drive me nuts? Yeah. Girls, we know this, right? Okay, well, I want you to know that that really was true. I'm being careful about what I just said there.
But I don't mean that they were really cute. I mean that they were tight. And that was meant to be because, guys, I, you'll understand, like, if you're riding on a horse all day long and it's loose, there tends to be a lot of chafing that goes on in there. You understand my feeling? Yeah. So you wanted those jeans to be skin tight so there wasn't a lot of loose clothing. It makes sense, right? And I'm telling you right now that a real cowboy did not wear a belt like that. In fact, they wouldn't have worn a belt, period. Girls, I know, like, if I wear a belt like that, I get irritated by the end of the day because this thing is sticking me in the tummy if I sit down. You ever notice that? It bothers you sometimes? Okay, well, imagine sitting on a horse for 12 hours a day. It would be irritating. So they didn't wear a belt, so they needed jeans that were skin tight all the way around. So they didn't wear a belt. This was typically only used for rodeos, and that was like a special prize, pretty much so. Cowboy on the range would not wear a belt or belt buckle. That was a rodeo thing. Uh, pants were worn very tight around the waist and everywhere else for the reasons I just shared with you. Um, now, you know, you say, oh, they're wearing Wranglers and they're wearing Levi's today. That's what they wore back then. Levi's have been around since the gold rush in California. That's who invented them, and that's why it was invented. They needed hardy clothes that would stand up to a lot of the tough stuff. Well, let's talk about the vest that they wore. Because their jeans were skin tight, they couldn't put stuff in the pockets because it would be uncomfortable, plus it didn't fit very well. So um, there were no room for pockets, so they basically would wear a vest that had deep pockets in it, and that's where they would carry stuff. Now this is a little kid's one, but imagine this and then having a big pocket in the like their tally book because they had to keep track of their cattle. And if you lose a cow, that's money off your paycheck. So for everyone that dies or you lose, you lose money. So you're constantly counting. Plus they carry their chew and their tobacco in here and stuff like that, okay? Their tobacco. They also wore slickers, those long, nice coats. For obvious reasons, especially once they got up to this territory, it was cold. So it kept them warm. It also protected them from thorns and brush and all that kind of stuff, trees as they run through. So we have a couple of different kinds of chaps. Uh, probably we're done at 31, 32, right? 31. Okay, we will start here tomorrow.